Hello and welcome to Edukimi's YouTube channel. My name is Harsh Singh and in this video we shall discuss the featured news for 7th September 2021. It is on hydro power projects in Himalayas. Now, the government of India has given its go ahead to 7 HEP projects in the Himalayan region. In this context we will understand what is the potential of hydro power projects in Himalayas and what are the repercussions in case there is climate change, in case there is global warming and despite that why is government of India going ahead with these kind of projects. Before we move ahead into the discussion, I'd like to show you some images from Himalayan region. Now these are the HEP projects, the hydroelectric power projects being constructed in Himalayan region. Now since Himalayas are the source of water and they are also mountains and this is why these are very important sources where this hydroelectric power can be generated. Now this has been rated as clean energy, as greener form of energy. So this is one reason why we are emphasizing on hydro power projects in the country. Why in Himalayan region as I mentioned immense source of uh, potential water which can be converted into kinetic energy. Right. So these are the important reasons. But if you carefully look at the images, just this image, this huge reservoir and then we have a dam, a gate here. Now in case there is a, an extra amount of water here because of climate change, because of global warming, because of the melting of the glaciers, what would happen to the areas which are underlying? Just look at this gorge. This gorge is very deep and what would happen if in case this whole dam breaks? Not just that. Imagine the construction of these huge dams. These huge dams are constructed and people are made to relocate to another place. Imagine the kind of landslides these nearby areas could have in case there is more rainfall, in case there is uh, a flash flood in these areas. So this area is very much prone to natural disasters of multiple, multiple proportions, floods, landslides, Earthquakes, these are earthquake prone areas and still the government is going ahead with these kind of projects, right? Why? Because Himalayan region holds immense potential for HEP, for hydroelectric power projects as I mentioned. Around 80% of the HEP of the whole India is coming from Himalayan region, right? And that too specifically Himachal Pradesh. The extent of vulnerability of Himachal Pradesh is such that almost 98% of the total geographical area of Himachal Pradesh is prone to landslides. And still we are going ahead with the construction of these mega projects. Now what is the important reason for this? The first important reason is the knowledge gap. The government thinks that this might not lead to potential vulnerability of the communities of the ecological space. So knowledge gap between what they're doing and what actually uh, is happening on the ground, the ecological repercussions, the environmental impact assessment. So there is some lacuna at this front. Second, economy and ecology tussle. There is always a debate between whether development should be done through ecological mode or economy. And this is one important debate that has to be resolved, especially in context to the HEP in Himalayan region. Then renewable energy status. We have given renewable energy status to solar energy, to wind energy. That's right. But if we have given this renewable energy status to water projects, that is also good. But why not give it to only the PICO, nano, micro level water projects? Why are we giving these uh, renewable status to projects which have got 2000 megawatt capacity. These are the projects where we have to uh, relocate the people, where we have to deforest the whole area and are, is this renewable? No, they are forests which are not renewable and therefore these big mega projects of river of HEP should not be given the uh, renewable status. Sadly it has been given. So this is why we are uh, interesting on renewable capacity. Why? Because we had already said 450 megawatt 450 gigawatt by 2030. So these big projects also become a part of the same, right? So this is another reason. Geostrategic wars. Now India is at geostrategic war with countries like China, with countries like Bangladesh, with countries like Pakistan. Because, th because these countries are also creating mega dams, mega reservoirs in these rivers itself. So we have Brahmaputra, we have Indus and therefore India is also in the competition of utilizing the water resources. Not only utilizing the water resources, India will also build civilizations around these kind of HEP. Right? So development will come through the place where there is power, where there is energy. And this is what India is also following, following suit of China, simple. So a war in itself and co-benefit justification. So the government says that uh, we are not only giving uh, the renewable energy but this is also going to benefit the whole society. It will also help us raise clean energy, employment status, all those things along with that. So these are the reasons why the government is still going ahead with HEP, hydroelectric power projects in Himalayan region. 
I just spoke of an important point. What happens when there is melting of the glaciers? There will be increase in the amount of water and this water will lead to flooding in the lower terrain areas, right? Not just that. Imagine uh, the kind of a compensatory afforestation that is happening. The kind of afforestation that is happening after uprooting the trees at these mega dams, only 10% of these saplings are found at the right place. The rest of them die. So the compensatory afforestation is not compensatory at all. It is creating a huge environmental impact this is one imagine the ecology and habitat destruction we have rare of the rare species found of the animals flora and fauna and there's complete destruction of the local ecology right so this cannot be compensated at all the is this the growth agenda of a country no but this is what is happening in himalayan region we have seen this in seven of the projects which have been which have gotten cleared by the government itself right cascading effect what is cascading effect now whatever happens at the himalayan region it is definitely going to impact what is going to happen in the lower terrain regions also also what happens with the energy projects there it is also going to help or have impacts on the people again right so cascading effect in case something goes wrong is going to happen to the people living in those fragile himalayan ecosystems so in case there is flood in case there is breakage of the dam in case there is landslide who suffers it is the people who suffer and that is why building these big dams in those areas is something that is uh, causing people this kind of uh, problem then what is the impact on local water body now in case we are holding water back now this is another point in case we are holding water back what will happen to the uh, the flow of the river the course of the river what what will happen to the uh, course of the river downstream it will it will all dry up and what will happen to the animals who are sustaining on this kind of water they will they will uh, they will go haywire and this is what is happening to uh, lo low lying areas right so if if nanital is a hilly area why do we see more attacks of these animals left birds in in the lower terrain areas in uttarakhand this is the reason there is local water body and it will have no water it will have if there is no water there is no prey base and this is where the animals will stray in the in the local areas village areas urban areas so increased amount of issues right what about impact on local structures this is an earth earthquake prone area and it has been already said that in the coming 100 years we will find a very very big earthquake which will be happening in the himalayan region and still we are going to construct these kind of projects so definitely very much vulnerable and in news and therefore becomes very relevant for upsc to ask the varied perspectives of why government is still going ahead with this kind of project so what you got to do is to build dimensions to it so geo strategic implication is one of it right uh, the ecology impact is one of it right the the balance between ecology and economy is another so you have to present all these points in the answer that will fetch you marks what is chiefly required right now is to pause is to pause and to think upon what kind of projects is government releasing for execution and what it is not and it has to do effective impact assessment impact assessment on the society impact assessment on the on the uh, local ecology as well and strict compliance of such impact assessment must be done afforestation if at all done should be done so that there is 100% reforestation 100% uh, 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 reforestation of the forested areas not only that there should be local stakeholder involvement also so in case there are people suffering through this grievance redressal must be addressed too another big point about it is that we should not focus at the big we should focus at many many small many many micro right so this is important right the conclusion states that the ecological damage in one region cannot be simply compensated by repair measures in the other therefore the repair must be done in himalayan region itself why and why and and even before that even before that the wisdom lies in why even having uh, to do repair measures why not have sustainable small microstructures right so this is the wisdom behind it now after having understood the article all you got to do is to look at the various dimensions of these uh, projects of the hep at himalayan region and after that you can attempt this question the question says discuss the impact of hydropower projects in himalayas what are the reasons for increase in number of these projects if you like this video, if you like our effort, do share some love on us through likes, comments and shares. If you subscribe to the channel, you will receive timely updates. Thanks for watching.